Yo, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to stabilize the footage out of your Studio G2 camera. Uh, as you might know, the B-RAW files now have uh, internal gyro data in embedded in them and it's synchronized with the footage so that when you go to put it into stabilization software like GyroFlow, um, there's almost nothing you need to do. It's already stable. It's already synced up to the footage, so it stabilizes really nicely, and it's really easy to do. Now, unfortunately, as I've said in previous videos, uh, the Micro Studio G2, although it has got an internal gyro and the data is being recorded, it doesn't seem to be in sync with the footage. So whenever you try to uh, stabilize it using the same methods as the Pocket 4K or the Pocket 6K, you run into issues. Um, but there are ways to make it work and it's actually not that difficult to do at all. So although the I'm saying that the footage and the gyro data is not in sync. Technically, the gyro data and the footage, they are in sync, but they are offset slightly. So the gyro data and the, and the video footage always stays in sync. The video footage and the gyro data are just slightly uh, out offset. So when the stabilization footage tries to make adjustments, it's doing it at slightly the wrong time, uh, but it is consistent throughout the whole footage. And from what I can tell, it's consistently offset through all, all the recordings that I've done. All we need to do is use gyro flow to offset the gyro data from the footage and then uh, export that file that we can then use later on in uh, DaVinci Resolve using the uh, GyroFlow OFX plugin. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need to do is head over to the GyroFlow website, to particularly to the documentation section. Uh, put links in the video description down below, um, and you're gonna be looking for the nightly build of the GyroFlow software, and uh, you'll be looking for a part on the page that looks like this and you need the nightly build of the OFX plugin. So yeah, link down in the description and look for the link that looks like this on the page. Um, so the nightly builds are like, uh, or the dev builds as they're also known, they're just the latest and most up-to-date versions of the software and the plugin. Um, the creator of the GyroFlow software doesn't just want to keep releasing new versions every week when he adds or uh, adds new features or fixes bugs. So instead, he runs this development version that people can use and try out the new feature features, and um, they can use it if they run into bugs with the current uh, public version. Go get the dev version of the. OFX plugin and the dev version of GyroFlow and install those and then fire up GyroFlow and drag your footage from the G2 into GyroFlow. Okay, so uh, once you've dragged your footage into GyroFlow, you'll need to set your lens profile. I'm using a 7.5 layer and I'm recording a 4K UHD, which is 3840. So just by typing in 7.5 and 3840, I get this first one pops up, which is actually for a Micro Studio 4K G2. Um, ignore the frame rate, that has no relation to the lens profile at all. Uh, I kind of wish they didn't, people didn't bother putting that in because it doesn't really matter. Um, so choose that one. Thank you, Brandon FPV. Uh, I also like to put a low pass filter on. Uh, sometimes the gyro data can be a little bit rough. This one wasn't too bad. You can see the difference between the two isn't very much, but it seems to do a slightly better job um, with the low pass filter turned on. So next thing to do is to apply the offset. So you can just click anywhere, right click anywhere in the footage and click here where it says add manual sync point and then we're just going to type in 
minus uh, and we're going to put the sink the offset in there now uh, I've been using minus 43 but when I knew I was going to make this video I wanted to take a bit more time and try and figure out what would be the most accurate thing it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect it seems I get really good results from anywhere from minus 43.000 to what I think is probably the actual offset which is 48 minus 48.660 and the reason why I think it's 48.66 is because you can see here that the frame readout time is 16.22 milliseconds and I'm kind of thinking that maybe um, it's um, a multiple of that so that is three time three frame readout times it seems to get good results whether that's the exact number I don't know as I said it's I've get, got good results with minus 43 and up to minus 48 so just put anywhere in between that and um, that's it it's stabilized now so you don't need to use any of the auto sync or adding auto adding uh, sync points where it, auto, where it uses the optical flow um, you literally just add a manual sync point to deal with the offset of the gyro data in the video footage um, and yeah then it'll all be perfectly synced up um, then next thing to do is go down here and export project file including processed gyro data uh, I've already got one but I'll just overwrite it anyway Then when it's exported that we're just going to head over to DaVinci Resolve and um, apply the uh, that file using the plugin. Okay so we're over here now in DaVinci Resolve and I've imported my um, footage into the timeline. I did apply um, some color grading just so it doesn't look so bad and then we're going to go to open effects and you should find the gyro flow effect there and simply click, click load for current file that will load in the gyro flow data that we've exported just now using the gyro flow software and now the footage is all fully stabilized within uh, DaVinci Resolve so this is where you could obviously continue you could do all your color grading and your cutting and pasting and putting your clips together or whatever um yeah that's that's it <laughs> that, that is it uh, within the within this you can adjust your smoothness um so if you wanted it super smooth you could use like 0.5 it's going to zoom in a bit more but it will get rid of any uh, harsh movements that you might need to get rid of i usually run at um, 0.1 or 0.05 just hardly any stabilization at all it's more the it just takes off the rough edges um, nobody can say that their footage doesn't look better once it's been put through stabilization software I mean I fly quite smoothly and but sometimes you're flying in hard conditions or whatever and uh, yeah you need to get rid of those rough edges as I, as I said so really easy to do uh, nobody should be having any issues stabilizing their footage uh, out of the G2 studio G2 um, yeah just uh, follow my little guide here and I'll see you in the next one. Laters.